Vivonia's when we have a moment. Hmm. Wonder what's up this time. Quit following me. And the Traveler. I've been waiting for you. Whoa. Looks like Jean wasn't the only one waiting for us. Klee and Kaya are here too. Oh, it's Paimon and Mr. Honorary Knight. It's been so long. Ah, look who it is. You've caught me completely off guard this time. But then again, it's always a pleasant surprise when you two show up. <laughs> Guess we were so excited to see Jean again that we forgot to knock. I hope we didn't startle anyone. Uh, wait a sec. You weren't talking about anything that we're not supposed to hear, were you? Hey, stop pretending like we're doing food deliveries. It's been a while since we last met, but I can see you two haven't changed one bit. Don't worry, we weren't discussing anything confidential. In fact, we were just talking about you. Maybe we should let the star of the story explain it in their own words. Yeah! Let me tell it! Let me tell it! A few days ago, I was reading... Todoko Tales in the solitary confinement room when all of a sudden, whoosh, a letter came flying in through the window. Flying through the window? How does the letter fly? Like a bird does. It was flapping its wings. It could even talk. It said, um, well, it was a bunch of stuff I didn't understand. You couldn't understand? Then it must have been talking about how to avoid solitary confinement. Ahem. <clears throat> Kaya? Just saying. We don't want to let a teachable moment slip by. <sighs> okay, I know. Anyway, the letter said, Oh, Klee, are you behaving? I see you've wound up in the solitary confinement room again. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Mommy is busy these days and can't take you out to play. But there's good news! I have a friend who has very kindly invited you to visit her. Oh, so the letter's from Alice! In principle, yes. <sighs> but the issue is that Alice's friend lives quite far from here. The letter says that Mom's friend lives in Sumeru. The Knights of Favonius could never agree to send Klee off to Sumeru on her own. But Klee is rather intent on taking Alice's friend up on this invitation. Yeah, I really want to go! Uh, you see? So we were wondering, who can we send with her on the journey? Preferably someone who's a reliable hero and with a history of saving Mondstadt. Oh, so that's why you wanted to see us. I do apologize, but Klee gets along with you so well. We couldn't think of a more suitable choice. <sighs> sure, we can do that, no problem, right? <laughs> can you really, Mr. Honorary Knight? Yay! With Mr. Honorary Knight around, Klee's not afraid of anything! See, I told you that he'd agree. In that case, we'll leave Klee in the trusty hands of the Traveler. And you too, Kaya. You should join them. I noticed you quietly completed that backlog of paperwork we had. You deserve the chance to unwind a little. Oh, so you noticed. Well then, I suppose I have no reason to refuse. Great! Things will go even more smoothly with Kaya! Around. Still, Sumeru is pretty far. It's gonna be a long journey. Don't worry. Mom's letter had a magic invite inside. Mom says we just have to all shout out 
out where we want to go at the same time. And poof! We'll be there in the blink of an eye! Wow! Well, that'll definitely make things easier. It only works three times, though. So we should only use it when we really need to. Three's plenty. One for the way there, one for the way back, and one extra, just for good measure. Sounds very mysterious. I still think we should use it sparingly. After all, we don't know the exact location of where we'll be headed, or what dangers we may encounter on the way. Here's what I suggest. Traveler, you're well connected. I'm sure you must have friends who are familiar with Sumeru. I say we start by teleporting to one of them. It'll give us a chance to test out the magic invite, and also find ourselves a local guide. sense. And since it has three uses, there's no point letting one of them go to waste. Couldn't have put it better myself, Paimon. So, do you have a particular contact in mind? <laughs> well, we need someone who's familiar with Sumeru and can be our guide. So, sounds like we need a forest ranger. And everyone knows that the best place to go looking for a forest ranger is a little place called... That's the one! Maybe we can get Tainari to help us! Alright. Gandarvaville it is. Okay! I'm happy wherever we go! Especially with Kaya and Mr. Honorary Knight! We should be on our way then. If you'll excuse us, Acting Grandmaster. Yes, let the wind lead. I wish you a safe journey. And Klee... I know, I know. I'll be careful, I promise. Great! Okay, here goes nothing. Take us to... Gondarvaville! Gondarvaville. Mondstadt? The next we're in Sumeru. So this is where Mom's friend lives? Wow! There are so many big flowers! Oh! And jumpy mushrooms! Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet! Sumeru's full of strange stuff like this! Like... um... Huh? Paimon doesn't remember seeing one of those. Uh... Wait! Are you talking about Paimon? Listen carefully, Klee. Those jumping mushrooms are called fungi. They may look cute, but if you get too close to one, it'll try to hit you with its cap. Really? Okay, well, I'll hit it back with my cap. And then I'll hit it with the hood on my jacket, too. <laughs> I'll definitely win if it's two hats against one. As long as playing with hats doesn't escalate to playing with bombs. But Klee's our friend, so we should be able to convince her to keep this trip explosion free. Right? Uh-huh. I'll be extra careful not to blow anything up. Um... I mean, I'll try my best. Aw, uh, that's very good of you, Klee. You're being very grown up today. Yep. I'm super grown up. I'm already the Spark Knight. Okay, Spark Knight. Well, keep up the good work, because very soon we'll be introducing you to a friend of ours called Tainari in Gondarvaville. Huh, too slow. Huh? And is that you, Luther? What's she doing in 
Darvaville. Hmm. I've definitely heard the other forest rangers mention somebody dressed like that before. I see. Then it looks like my suspicions are correct. Hmm? Who do we have here? Traveler and Paimon! Huh? Oh! Kaya and Klee are here too! Hi, Kale! It's been ages! Kale! Yeah! What are you two doing here? Well, that question's really more for you, uh. What a coincidence. I didn't expect to run into a fellow Favonian captain this far from Mondstadt. How's the vacation going? Seriously? Bring the whole crew, why don't you? <sighs> Is it just Paimon, or does you not look particularly thrilled right now? Oh, cool! Great idea! Let's go! If you're trying to accommodate me, there must be some misunderstanding. I'm fine. There's nothing embarrassing about running into colleagues in the wild. Uh, but earlier you were... Great. Well, I'm sure there's a fascinating reason behind why you're all the way out here in Sumeru. Do share it with us. If you must know, it's a little complicated. But, simply put, I'm searching for a cousin of mine from the Lawrence clan. He went missing recently, and after searching his home, we found evidence that led us here. He appears to believe that somewhere in Sumeru lies the key to restoring our clan to its former glory. He came all the way to Sumeru for that? What was he going to do, enroll at the Academia? I doubt he came here to learn. He's much too old to start getting a basic education now, and from what I know of him, I doubt he has any interest in intellectual pursuits. All he cares about is restoring his clan's honor. Nothing wrong with that idea in principle, but I'm not certain how fanatical he is about it. So, there's no knowing what lengths he might go to. As a knight and a member of the Lawrence clan, it's my duty to make sure he doesn't bring harm to others. Oh, ho. If this is true, then your cousin is quite a man of action. Traveling alone to Sumeru from Mondstadt is no mean feat. Nor is daring to make me personally concerned about his safety. <laughs> he has no idea what's coming to him. You know, underneath it all, Paimon thinks you is a really caring person. Yeah, she's the best! She brought me some moon pie last time. <clears throat> He is family, after all. Anyway, I will make sure to find him and escort him safely back to Mondstadt. Hmm. Now, back to you. How and why did you all suddenly show up here? Hmm. I'm afraid that could be tricky. Master Tainari is still at Partis the Eye delivering his lectures. Uh, he isn't due back for a while. But I think I'll be able to help out. The description in the invitation letter is vague, but I'm pretty sure it's hinting at somewhere in the desert. The desert? Hmm? Does that mean Mom's friend is from the desert? Hmm. I guess I'll call her Auntie Desert for now. I remember Mahamatra Sino once told me a strange rumor about that part of the desert. They say there's a secret domain there that can make all of your wishes come true. Ah, uh, wait, wait. He said I should just call him Sino. Mm, I keep forgetting that. Huh. A domain that makes people's wishes come true. Wow. So is it true? Does it really exist? I probably would have believed it a few years ago. But now that I'm a little older and wiser... I think it makes sense to be more skeptical about things like this. This explains a lot. The domain could well be a myth, but he probably figured he had nothing to lose. If you intend to search for this place, then please allow me to join you. My cousin has quite a collection of books about Sumeru desert mythology on his shelves. I highly suspect that he, too, is looking for that domain. Can I come too? 
I think you might need me there. You'll definitely need a local guide while you're in Sumeru. And I, uh, I think I have what it takes to be that person. Plus, it's a forest ranger's duty to bravely lend a helping hand to others in need. We have every confidence in your abilities, Kale. Our party grows bigger and stronger still. What say you to this, Captain Klee? I think it's super cool! I read in a storybook that on your own you can only have a drop of happiness, but in a group you have a whole ocean. So I'm sure Mom's friend will be super happy if I show up to visit and bring a whole bunch of friends with me. That's the spirit. In that case, let's get the magic invite to take us there. Sight. Yes, the scenery is quite magnificent. <sighs> Are you okay, Eula? You don't look so good. I'm fine. Just taking a moment to acclimatize. <clears throat> the air here is much drier than in Mondstadt. <clears throat> this area doesn't look very habitable, and... I don't see a domain entrance nearby either. Oh no... Uh, I, I didn't pronounce the destination wrong. Did I? I mean, I don't think I did. Nope, you got it right. It definitely wasn't your fault. I said Gundarvaville wrong earlier, but we still ended up in the right place. Klee's right. We're in the right place. There's no doubt about that. Phew. Hmm. Maybe the entrance is hidden under a sand dune. Who knows? We'll just have to start by looking around. Oh, I'm on so tired and so thirsty. Hmm. We should have found something by now. Unless there's a problem with the magic invite. Huh? How could that happen? Uh-oh. Did I break it by accident? But I didn't do anything! Todoko will back me up. I'm innocent! Uh, it's definitely not your fault, Klee. See? Not even a wrinkle on it. Hmm. Does Mr. Honorary Knight have an idea? where you're going with this? Interesting approach. Assuming we're right about this magic invite. That is to say, if it was sent from within the domain, the invite likely has some sort of connection to it. Oh, I get it now. Plus, I know a super special trick we can use. Hmm, what kind of trick? Can you teach it to us too? Of course! Mom said that if I ever need help, I just need to shout this out loud. Magic invite, magic invite, Klee needs your aid. Do something now, so Klee's not afraid. Look, something flew over. Huh? It looks like... a bottle. Remarkably effective. That's one trick I'll be keeping up my sleeve in the future. You should make a note of it too, Eula. Absolutely not. It's not my style. I suppose bottles are pretty common in Sumeru mythology. So, uh, is this supposed to be the entrance to the domain? A domain? In a bottle? Huh. Well, if there's one thing we learned in Liyue, it's never judge a domain by its cover. Guess there's one way to find out if this really is the way in. Come on, reach out with your hand. We made it! Oh, that answers that question. There's a path! I'm gonna take a look! 
Hey, don't run off and leave us all behind. Look, look, there's a huge garden here. Incredible. It looked so small from the outside. Everyone, I suggest that we stop here for a moment. We should take stock of our surroundings before deciding on our next course of action. Since we're in a bottle, has anyone heard the story of the magic bottle? Oh, you mean the one about King Deshret and the genie in a bottle? I've read it before, but I struggled with some of the vocabulary. <laughs> What's the story about, Kaya? Mom told me a story once about a group of adventurers who went to Bottle Land. But I don't think there was a magic bottle in that one. Don't worry, Klee. I can tell you all about the story of the magic bottle. But if you keep running off on your own, you'll miss all the good parts. Oh. Okay, I got it. I'll stay with the group from now on. Hmm. You sense it too, don't you, Kale? Something's not quite right. Yeah, the scenery here is beautiful, but <laughs> it's too quiet. And there's no sign of Klee's Auntie Desert here anywhere. Maybe Auntie Desert lives way further down inside. <laughs> this place is super big, just like Fischl's Immer Nachfreisch. We still have a long way to go. Guess we won't know until we get there. Let's keep going. Hopefully we'll meet her soon. It looks like no one set foot on this road for quite some time. I agree. And the further we get, the more I feel like this place is a whole lot bigger than we imagined. Hey! There's something straight- Wow! It's a big ball of water! I wonder what it feels like. Can I touch it? It's so big that we could probably pass straight through it! <gasps> That's so scary! Stop giving Paimon the heebie-jeebies! Let's not touch it for now. We still don't know enough about our environment. But we can't just do nothing at all because then... Nothing at all will happen! Hmm... I have a feeling that this could be the core that sustains this entire bottle domain. In which case, the moment we touch it, this place will instantly revert to its original size, with all of us still inside. Yikes! Okay, okay! Paimon won't touch it! Jeez. Kaya, are we really gonna get squished inside a bottle? Of course not, Klee. I'm sure the real core of this domain is hidden away in a very safe place. Somewhere like... Over there, for example. Uh, I was so nervous that I didn't notice that big wheel at all. Wait, who goes there? doesn't seem hostile. In fact, don't you think it looks happy to see us? Really? Uh, you sure it's not gonna gobble up by my hole? I don't think it's hungry. Are you, Water Droplet?
Oh dear, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm not understanding a word of this. Understand us after all. Oh, I get it now. It's leading the way for us, just like the cats and Mondstadt. Like the cats? How so? When you're walking around in Mondstadt City, sometimes a cat will show up on the side of the road. It'll walk ahead of you for a while, and if you're curious enough to follow it, you'll soon find yourself in front of a fine establishment called. Exactly. So let's see where this water droplet takes us. It could be interesting. Droplet bring us here because it wants our help with something? What? Your friend is trapped in the wall? Don't be sad, Water Droplet. We're here now. We'll save your friend. You bet. But how are we gonna save? Do we have to break down this wall somehow? Nope, we can't do that. No breaking the wall. Hmm. Do we need to find a key of some sort then? Oh no! Where'd it go? Look, the device has lit up. And it's projecting images onto the wall. A two-dimensional space with objects of the same composition as the device nested inside. Yep, what Kaya said, and that's where its friend is. But how exactly do we enter the image on the wall? Maybe... we just copy what the water droplet did? Hmm... but what does that mean? Hold on, I think Klee's on to something. Since the water droplet appears to be the key that activated the mechanism, we may be able to follow it inside simply by touching the device. The principle is no different than how we entered this bottle domain. Fair enough. Okay, deep breath, then head in. Thank you, 
Mr. Honorary Knight. That was a huge help. Traveler, how do you feel after entering that two-dimensional space? Any physical side effects? <sighs> Quit while you're behind. You're clearly fine. Well, I'm just glad that you're okay. Good thing you was here to look out for everyone. Can't say the same for you, though, Kaya. You're pretty quick to send the Traveler inside. Hey, now. I only suggested that because I was confident that the Traveler would be fine. Water Droplet, is there anyone else here besides you and your friend? Yep. You know. Anyone who looks like me or my friends. Oh! It ran off again! Hopefully this is a good sign! Amazing! Come on, let's follow it! Quit following me! Following me. It looks like there might be a town up ahead. Huh. Maybe more people live in this domain than we thought. And maybe that's where I'm. Idea, the situation is now critical. Her window of opportunity to fix this is rapidly closing. I'm sure you've noticed just how much things have deteriorated in recent days. But, but even so... This is your home. Are you really going to let everything fall to pieces? I... well, I live here, but it doesn't actually belong to me. Huh? Paimon knows that voice! Anyone else who comes into this domain in the future will take one look at the ruins before them and conclude that this place was abandoned years ago. But just imagine how different things could be if you maintain this domain in perfect condition. Whoever sets foot inside would witness a magical wonderland. How miraculous it would feel to them to find such unimaginable beauty in the middle of a lifeless desert. Oh, you're right, General. Truly, but... Act now while you still can. You have to stand up to this and break free from your despair. The most important thing is to have no regrets in the end. Hmm. Well, no one chooses to have regrets, do they? But I take your point. I'll try my best to stop running away. But the question remains of where to begin. <laughs> Paimon's figured out who it is! Is it Mr. Honorary Knight's friend from a faraway land? A divine priestess? What's that? <gasps> Is it a kind of mage? What are you doing here? Huh? We have new visitors? Greetings, everyone. This is the Valurium Mirage, and I'm the caretaker, Adia. I'm so sorry that you have to see this domain in its current state of disarray. We are actively working on repairs, and everything will be back to normal shortly. <laughs> um, I hope. Greetings, everyone. I guess I should introduce myself, too. It's alright. Just leave the introductions to me. Uh, I kind of wanted to say hello in my own way. But no harm done. I guess I'll let her do the honors. This lady is a visitor to the Domain, just like yourselves. She is a formidable military general. Have any of you heard of Inazuma's Onmyo Chamber? The... uh... what chamber? 
Onmyo Chamber. It's an elite training academy for gifted students of Onmyodo. Practitioners are divided into four classes, A through D, and assigned the power of Shikigami based on their mastery of the art. Uh, wait. This lady famously led the Class D underdogs to victory against the Class A favorites in the final mock campaign before graduation. An astonishing feat that few in the history of the Academy have ever achieved. Hence, Formidable General is no exaggeration. Isn't that right, General? Uh, what's wrong? Uh, <laughs> huh? Wait! So, the favorites were beaten by the classy underdogs? Uh, Paimon's not completely following. That doesn't sound like the Divine Priestess Mr. Honorary Knight's talking about. Uh-oh. Did she just get caught lying in front of someone she was trying to impress? Or... Maybe she uses a different identity in her private life, and this is the first time her friends are learning about it. Seems kind of embarrassing, but also kind of cool. I guess having someone else to introduce you is a good way to make an impression. Hmm, maybe I'd fit in better with everyone if I had a title too. <clears throat> Some people call me a general. But it's just their way of showing respect. My actual name is Sangonomiya Kokomi. Huh? Oh no. Sorry, my mistake, General. Uh, I mean, Miss Sangonomiya? <laughs> Call me whatever you like, Idia. The only important thing about names is knowing who's who. Oh, I get it now. It's like that story that Mom told me that time. Kligan explain. So basically, in the story, a big group of people go on an adventure to Fatherland. One of them's called the King, and some of them are called Knights. So, Miss Sangonomiya must be the super smart one who solves all the problems in the story. Uh... What's that one called again? Perhaps... a sage? Indeed. Wisdom is an important attribute found in military generals. Okay, well I'll just call you that. <laughs> Miss General it is. <laughs> Fine by me. Sounds really cute. Coming from you, at least cuter than my pen name, that's for sure. Well then, how should I address the rest of you? <laughs> how could I ever forget you? But what about these esteemed ladies and gentlemen accompanying you? I'd be delighted if you could introduce me to them too. Wait, Klee wants a title too! Mm, okay, got it! Klee wants to be a mage! The kind that flies around everywhere! Da da da! Whoosh! Kaya can be the master thief. Mr. Honorary Knight can be. uh. the knight! And Paimon will be the fairy who follows the knight everywhere! Master thief, huh? I did like playing pirates as a child, so I suppose this is an apt role for me. And I must admit, the master part is a nice touch. Uh, hold on a second. Are you saying the position of knight is now filled? You can be the sword master who can cut through anything and also gets to wear a super sparkly cape. <laughs> That's more like it. And Kale can be... Uh, no, no, I don't mind. Healer is a great role. I just don't know if I'm qualified to be one. Whenever I'm thinking of titles for myself, I usually imagine myself as an adventurer or musician. <laughs> I never thought I could be a healer. I mean, it feels like it should be Master Tainari's role if anyone's. <laughs> don't 
worry, Kale. You'll be the bestest healer ever. You don't talk much, but you're very kind, just like the healers in Mom's stories. You'll do fine. I heard you're good with bandages. You can patch up a wound, can't you? Uh, I can pitch a tent. Maybe you heard wrong? <laughs> but I'll do my best. It's my first day filling in for Master Tainari, but hopefully it's the first of many. This is a great idea. Once a new visitor arrives, they can assume a new identity, then add in some role-playing. Oh, we can't leave you out, Miss Adia. Hmm. There are lots of characters in Mom's stories, but you don't remind me of any of them. That's perfectly okay. I already have a role here anyway, remember? I'm the caretaker. I got it! I got it! This wasn't in any of the stories, but you can be the mascot. Mascot? Klee, maybe you could think up an even better role for Miss Adia. A mascot, you say? Isn't that a character that doesn't have to actually do anything and sits around letting everyone else do all the important work? Incredible. You've seen right through me. Sounds like the idea of being lazy is pretty exciting to her. <laughs> the mascot serves to maintain troop morale, Idea. Don't underestimate your role. Ah, oh, alright. I'll be the mascot then. That's right! Thank you for bringing these new friends here safely. You can go off and play now. Thanks, Water Droplet. See ya! Hmm? Huh? Water Droplet? Is that your pet name for it? <laughs> I suppose it's as accurate a nickname as any. We keep getting sidetracked, but I believe you were saying something about being in a difficult predicament. Is something wrong with the Valuria Mirage? Oh, yes. About that. I'm afraid the entire domain has recently sustained some significant damage. It was as if the whole world was suddenly flipped upside down. A few components went missing from the core, which sustains the domain, and the impact cascaded out from there. Needless to say, many things in the Valuria Mirage have now stopped working. Just days after I agreed to let my friend's daughter come and visit, too. When she gets here and sees the state this place is in... <sighs> oh, so you're Mom's friend? Hi, Auntie Desert. I'm Klee. Here, I brought the magic invite, see? Huh? Wait, so you're... you're... Look how dilated her pupils are. She must be very surprised. Yeah, and <laughs> not in a good way. Mom's the one who sent me here. She's the strongest mage ever. She said that her friend lives in the desert. You live in the desert, so that must be you. Right, Auntie Desert? Ah, I see. So being a mage runs in the family. Uh, you're... you're Alice's daughter. Oh, I just want the ground to swallow me up right now. Wait, that's it. I'll hide myself away in the core of the domain. <laughs> hide there until this all blows over. See you all in a hundred years. Idea's really going through it. She's like a shriveled little forest fungus, hanging its head in shame. Kale? That's a harsh analogy. Where'd all that come from? Don't worry, Auntie Desert. Klee's here to help you. And all my friends will help, too. Just take a deep breath. And then another deep breath, and all your worries will fly away. Yeah, don't you worry. Sir fix -a -Lot over here has a good track record with this kind of thing. Well, I'm useless, but it looks like that won't matter with all you capable people around. Fantastic. Don't put yourself down, Adia. You're great, too. Thanks for your encouragement. Anyway, for the time being, please talk amongst yourselves. That'll give me some time to think things through and maybe make a start on, um, delegating. Hi, Miss General. Mr. Honor 
honorary knight says that you're from Watatsumi Island. What's it like there? There must be loads of fish, right? Wait! You look kind of like a mermaid. Are there fish in your family? Oh, uh, sorry to disappoint you, Miss Mage, but I'm just an ordinary human. I have lots of great stories about Watatsumi Island, though. Come on, let's enjoy the scenery while I tell you all about it. Feeling nervous, Kale? Well, it's your first time as a guide, after all. Hmm? Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm just, uh, still settling into the role. So I was thinking about how to talk more like Master Chainari. Well, the easiest way to imitate someone is to start with their most common turns of phrase. Oh, okay. In that case, uh, <clears throat> put that mushroom down. Huh. <sighs> Now! It's highly poisonous! There you go. With just a few simple words, you've captured your master's personality perfectly. Anyway, what about your role? Don't you mind being the master thief? It doesn't sound like you're one of the good guys. <laughs> Maybe not. Until you factor in that I only steal from the enemy. I think that's enough to make me one of the good guys, don't you? Uh, fair point, fair point. Huh, too slow. Huh? Who else has visited the Valoria Mirage recently? Uh, there was someone from the Academia who came not long ago. A Kasharawar scholar. Blonde hair. Architect, I think. He was a huge help, and redesigned many of the buildings here. Although he was always grumbling to himself, he was extremely diligent in his work. Ah, oh, what a kind person. I could tell that was a sensitive soul. A lot like me. Uh, sorry, please pretend you didn't hear that. <clears throat> I'm of course a very strong and resilient person. After him, an aristocrat from Mondstadt showed up, then the gen... I mean, Miss Sangonomiya. Unfortunately, everything here suddenly started changing before I had the chance to be a good host and show them around. Do you know where the Mondstadt aristocrat is now? If I remember correctly, he headed north after the incident. It's a pity we're having all these issues. Oh, if we could get everything working normally again, I could probably locate him in an instant. Still, not to worry. There's nothing dangerous here. Hmm... Idea, you got an update for us? We've all caught up with each other. Very well. Then please allow me, Idea, your mascot, to explain exactly what's happened here. Basically, this entire domain is powered by a device called the Central Hub, which you all saw earlier. But following a major incident, several key components from the central hub came loose and went flying. Four components, I believe, which has caused the central hub to stop turning. Oh, so that thing's supposed to spin? Yes, it definitely shouldn't be frozen still like it is now. At least, that's not how it was when I first got here. Oh... I've done such a terrible job of taking care of it, it's so embarrassing! Hey! Everything's gonna be okay! Hmm... So, we need to fix the big wheel up there. And to do that, we need to find the missing parts! Right. I do know where one of the parts is. It landed not too far away. But the rest all landed in different areas. I'm afraid you'll have to go and look for those. <clears throat> now, as the caretaker and your mascot, I shall announce your respective adventure duties. Um, you can just be yourself if you want. No need to force the whole role-playing thing. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, okay, so I was thinking that maybe Swordmaster Eula and Healer Kale could investigate the Northern Zone, if that's okay? Fine by me. 
I was going to be looking for my cousin there anyway. I'll be your backup, Eula. I know you usually team up with Amber, so I'll try my best to fill her shoes. Oh? Well, this'll be fun. Let's see if a forest ranger can outperform an outrider. Master Thief Kaya and Mage Klee, if you could earmark some time in your busy schedules to search the West Zone. Earmark? What does that mean? It just means we mustn't forget to do it. Don't worry. We can handle that. Finally, we have our general, Miss Sangonomiya, and our knight, the Traveler. If there's no objections, please come with me to retrieve the first component. Wow! Spoken like a true knight! <laughs> then, for my part, my strategic mind is at your service. All right, well, if anyone finds anything, come back here and we'll regroup. Please take care while you're out on the road and look after each other, especially our little mage here. You got it. I'll take extra special care of Kaya. I'll be on my best behavior. Uh... <laughs> okay, we'll leave it there for now. You two, please follow me. I remember seeing it just behind the central hub. So, how come you didn't bring it back when you first saw it? I'd have been more than happy to, if this one component was enough to fix the whole domain. But with three other components to find... Oh, I suddenly felt overwhelmed by how much work needed doing. Hmm, Paimon kinda gets that. Taking the first step is always the hardest part. Fallen Fury! <laughs> Too slow. Um, hey, so Paimon's been meaning to ask, what brought you here, Kokomi? Oh, um, well, things have quieted down in Watatsumi Island for now. So I thought I'd take the chance to get out and see more of the world. A pretty long way. Why Sumeru? I figured that I needed to venture farther than usual to really broaden my horizons. Well, that's one reason, anyway. I can explain in more detail another time. Huh. Okay, this is the spot. Now, I'm sure you're both wondering, <gasps> but where's the component? Nothing here! Oh, where could it be? Oh, it's that lamp thingy, right? Water Droplet showed us how that works already! Uh, yes, ugh, that's the one. There goes my big introduction! Showing people the ropes is supposed to be my job! Oh, I can't believe I'm being shown up by a Hydro Eidolon. Cheer up, Idea. The Hydro Eidolon can give a basic demonstration of how to use things, but beyond that, it can't communicate. That's where you come in. Your descriptions can explain everything in full, vivid detail. Paimon forgot how persuasive Kokomi can be when she really wants to. Hmm. Sometimes having a genius strategist around really comes in handy. Oh! Well, if you put it that way, <laughs> well then, just pretend like you've never seen it before, and I'll tell you all about it. This is called the Streaming Projector. Everything here in the Valurium Mirage was made using this device. All you need to do is place an item in the projector, and you can construct a corresponding item based on the shape of the original and your imagination. At least, I think that's what it used to do. With the domain in its current state, only its most basic functions are still operable. Okay, not quite that basic. At the moment, it's only able to show two-dimensional objects. I call them preprints. 
Think of it like a sort of draft or blueprint or something. So you're saying the component fell into the preprint? Yes, exactly. I'll leave you to go in and physically retrieve it. Well, I, um, I'll be out here rooting for you by, uh, by doing a motivational dance! Really? No. Sorry. I feel like I have two left feet when I try to dance. I guess I'll just find a place nearby to sit and wait patiently for you. Hey, come on! Cheer up! We'll handle everything from here! is in here. Yes, that's the one! Now you just need to bring it back out. What is this thing anyway? Some kind of gear? And why is it so small? It doesn't look like it belongs in that huge wheel. It's hard to explain, but I assure you that it's definitely one of the components. So that leaves three more components missing. Every journey begins with a first step. I think we're off to a good start, and things should keep going smoothly from here. You... you really think so? I suppose you're right. She did manage to defeat Class A at the Onmyo Chamber, after all. Um, you, uh, you don't need to keep bringing that up. Anyway, thank you for all your help. I'll take this and start trying to repair the central hub. You two may as well head back to town. Oh, why am I so clumsy? Once again, I was no help at all. The least I can do is try and handle the actual repairs. <laughs> Kokomi? Uh, I'm just a little confused. You mentioned that the water droplet showed you how to use the projector? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I'm so curious to know what happened. Oh, sure! I see. didn't last long. It also wasn't spinning at the right speed. Before the incident, it spun much faster than that. Oh, so you saw it back when it was still working? Oh, yes. I arrived here a little earlier than the rest of you. But the incident took place not long after I entered. Like Idea said, it felt like the world was... flipped upside down. Well... I don't know how else to describe it. And I certainly don't want to experience it again. No, it's no use. Uh, seems it won't run until all the missing components are returned. For a moment there, when it started turning, I got excited. I thought that maybe the hub can work just fine without the other three. Wishful thinking is only going to lead to disappointment, Idea. Let's stick to the plan. We'll get there. Hey, Mr. Honorary Knight and Miss General are here. Oh, and our mascot. You beat us. I was sure we were going to be the first ones back. Hey, how'd it go? Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Impressive. I doubt you'd find many other knights of such caliber even among the Knights of Favonius. How about our master thief and mage? Did you find anything? You bet! We made a huge discovery! The place we were trying to get to was blocked off. We couldn't see anything past it, and there was no way around. But then, just now, a huge canyon appeared out of nowhere, so we hurried back here. Huh? It appeared just now? Hmm... Come and see, Mr. Honorary Knight. Let's go on a canyon adventure! I'll sit this one out. I'm beat after trying to make those repairs. I need to take a break. Miss General, you should come too! You can hide behind me and give me smart advice while I protect you. Wonderful. It would be an honor to serve as advisor for our young mage. <laughs> Let's go! Rises. Huh, too slow. <sighs> Quit following me. Just before the canyon appeared, I heard a faint sound, like something mechanical turning. Could it have been the central hub? Hmm. That would mean this canyon appeared after it started spinning. Hey, you, uh... Oh. New guys, huh? Oh, hey! Lima didn't realize anyone else besides Dio lived here. You actually saw her? <laughs> She's barely shown her face since everything started falling apart here. Uh, excuse me for asking, but who are you? Oh, right. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Ferdinand. Me and my brothers look after this whole zone. Well, we used to, until this whole domain was, like, flipped upside down or whatever. The method we were using to make the carts and tracks stopped working after that. Idea is working on repairing the domain. We were just with her before coming here. Really? Huh. I assume that she'd be curled up in a fetal position somewhere, hoping all her problems will magically disappear on their own. Good for her. Anyway, I checked all the stations around the whole circuit. They've all conked out. Conked out? How? Would you mind elaborating a little for us? Uh, but aren't you just travelers who stumbled upon this place by accident? Nuh-uh! I'm Mage Klee, Idea's helper. A mage? You? <laughs> Allow me to explain. Okay, I gotcha. Well, right now the more helpers we got, the better, I guess. Anyway, our first priority is to get the cards here up and running again. Oh? And why is that? The roads here twist and turn so much that the best way to get around is by riding the rail tracks instead. Let me show you. This is what we used to make them. Did Dia bring you up to speed on these things? Yep. Basically, we need something that we can put inside that'll make a card for us. Mm, like what? Can it be anything as long as it looks like a card? Yeah, you could put it that way. But one other thing is that it has to be compatible with the tracks. So... something like... a sedan chair, maybe? Mm. But I'm not sure we have all the materials required to build one of those. How about you, Traveler? Any ideas? Hmm... that would solve the issue of materials! Wood's no good. A rickety wooden cart would be too dangerous. Re 
Really? Hey, everyone, come and see what Klee made. Ta-da! Look, I made a cart! Wow! Amazing work, Klee! Whoa! It fits a track like a glove, too. Plus, it's a heck of a lot cuter than the ones Adia made. <laughs> I just wanted to give it a try, and suddenly, boom! There it was! Paimon's gonna ask, what exactly did you make your cart from, Klee? I used Jumpy Dumpty! Uh -huh. Thought so. Hmm, is there a problem or something? If not, then let's get ready to leave. It's just... Th this cart is made from... um... It's a bomb or something, isn't it? Yeah, I gathered from your conversation that Jumpy Dumpty is a little more volatile than the cute name suggests. It's okay, though, because the end product only takes on the general look of the source material. Uh, so to be more specific, while different materials have different properties, most of them aren't transferred to... Uh... It's okay! No need to delve into the theoretical stuff. Paimon just wanted to make sure we aren't about to end up like the, uh... Flying fish of Starfell Lake. Huh? Can we ride the cart now? In a moment. We need a Hydro Idolin to power it up first. Okay, she's ready to roll. Hop in. The track is damaged up ahead. We need to make some repairs before we can go any further. Yep, looks like it's all reverted to a preprint state here. Do you know why that happened? Everything in this domain starts as a preprint and only takes shape after being illuminated by the streaming projector. But the Hydro Idolin that forms the tracks here has been trapped in the print. So someone needs to go into the preprint and rescue the Hydro Idolin, right? But the projector here is sealed off by a giant bubble! That's the Hydro Idolin's way of protecting the device from damage. If the streaming projector broke, then we'd be seriously stuck. Aha! So for step one, we need Water Droplet to help! Aww, it seems to really like that name! <laughs> Um, any volunteers for step two? Leave that to us! We know what to do! So the Hydroidolin was locked up in that chest. Aww, it's completely empty! Yay! We saved two Whoa! Water Droplet just transformed into some new tracks! Good. Let's keep going then.
No, no. The Hydra Idolans are like helpers here. As for my brothers, well... <sighs> those two. You'll meet them soon enough. Hmm, yes. Very nice. Just about finished repairing the station and the connecting tracks. Let's go check the track switcher now. It's over there. was huge. I bet it's something super important. I remember what Kaya said earlier. Very good, Klee. You're using what you saw earlier to make observations, like a real adventurer. Hmm. It appears to be a system that rotates to switch tracks. That's right. Originally, all you had to do was flip this switch and the junction would rotate. Hmm. But it seems Jeremy still hasn't fixed it yet. He sure talks big, but when it comes to actually getting things done... Is this Jeremy you mentioned one of your brothers? Yeah. When I talked to him about repairing the tracks, I suggested we start with the station. But he said we should start at the junction. Really, it made no difference which one we started with. But he just had to turn it into a huge argument. He always treats me like I'm a fool and disagrees with anything I say. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say now that I've already fixed the tracks. If you ask me, you're clearly a sharp person, Ferdinand. Yes! Finally someone who can recognize that, rather than just shrugging off my ideas. Come on, let's make our way to the junction and see what he's up to. I bet he's still fretting over what to do. Sometimes I can't help but get angry just thinking of Jeremy. You should have seen him back in the sandstorm. I suggested we go east, and he argued that we should go west. You are in a sandstorm? What happened after that? We separated and each went our own way. Lucky for us, we stumbled across this domain. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have been buried in the sand. Everything will get better once we get the switcher working again. Hmm. Still stuck here just as I expected. Well, did you make any progress? Didn't I already tell you? Just have the Hydroidolans fix the junction and then make a new cart. After that, we can use the junction to... Wait a minute, how did you get here? It took a lot of effort for me to climb all the way up here. 
The answer is standing right in front of you. Huh. <laughs> yeah, sure. Those travelers must have helped you. You never get anything done on your own. You always get someone else's help and then try to take the credit for yourself. You're one to talk. What have you managed to accomplish, huh? You were here just moping around all day. Oh, they started arguing the moment they saw each other. But aren't they supposed to be brothers? <laughs> Me? His brother? <laughs> Hardly. <sighs> <sighs> all right, Jeremy. That's enough. Ah, <sighs> fine. I'd rather be focusing my efforts on fixing the track switch rather than arguing anyway. You should calm down too, Ferdinand. Let's all focus on the situation at hand. Any personal problems can be settled later. Fine. I'm sorry you had to see that. My name's Jeremy. I'm one of the people responsible for taking care of this area. I assume you're the ones who helped repair the tracks. Thank you very much. It means a lot. No need to thank us. We're just trying to help Idea restore the domain. I see. Now that you and Ferdinand brought the cart up here, we'll need the Hydroidolans to fix the area below. Then again, huh? Seems the Hydroidolans are really important around this place. Yes, of course. Not only do they keep the junction turning, they operate practically everything else in the domain, too. Seems most of the tracks and junctions have been repaired now. Yep. So maybe it's time you give credit where credit is due, hmm? What? You think you deserve the credit? If anything, we should be thanking these travelers. Uh, you... Well, either way, you're not the one getting any credit. You're always quick to criticize my ideas and push your own, but you never actually get anything done. And what about you? Don't forget it was Hado and I who took care of the mess that one time you impulsively tried one of your brilliant ideas. Uh, speaking of Hado, wasn't he with you? I left early this morning. I assumed he'd be with you. Seriously? Couldn't you have at least looked to see where he was before you left? Hey, come on! You didn't see him either, so what's your excuse? Clee? Oh. Oh. I don't get it. Nobody did anything bad. Why are they arguing? I... Uh, I just don't like his smug attitude, that's all. Who are you calling smug? If anything, you're the one who's making such a big fuss right now. All right, I think we've heard enough from you two. If you insist on bickering, then I'd suggest you go somewhere else. Otherwise, I'll just cool you two off myself. Uh... <sighs> now, come with me. I'd like to have a word with you. Phew. Don't be upset, Klee. There are many complicated situations in this world which don't always have a logical explanation. As a passing traveler here, it's not my place to comment on their disputes. But in my experience, family issues can be the toughest to resolve. Seems you don't like dealing with this kind of thing either, Kokomi. It's still not right. I don't know how to explain my feelings. I'm sorry. We've calmed down. You shouldn't argue in front of a child like that. We're sorry, Klee. It's okay. 
back to the topic at hand. Weren't you about to go look for your brother, Hado? Ah, right. Our best guess is he's somewhere around the Torrential Twister. We would have to use the junction to send the cart to another area. Sorry to trouble you again, but would you help us find him? Oh, um, all right. Hey, come on, you two. You're brothers after all. Can't you try to get along? This is the end of this track segment. Auto should be nearby. Necessary. Ah, I guess you had repaired the tracks and stations as soon as I saw a cart come zipping along. <coughs> now that the tracks, station, and carts are all repaired, we're about ready to reopen Torrential Twister. It will be good to see my design back in action again. <sighs> You're in no condition to be out running around like this, Hado. <laughs> Yeah, but these are unusual circumstances. <coughs> That's true, but you should stop to think things through. Exactly. If there's anything that needs to be done, you can just let Ferdinand and I take care of it. <laughs> you and Ferdinand? Together? It would be a miracle for you two to do anything together without fighting. Hey! That's between Jeremy and me. No need to add fuel to the fire, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to make trouble. I'm just saying. <coughs> hey, Ferdinand? Oh, uh, don't worry. We're not arguing, Clee. We're just, uh, discussing some things. Are you and Jeremy worried about Hado? Hmm? Why don't you just talk to him about it? Kaya's also worried about me sometimes, but he doesn't ever criticize me. You're right, but our relationship is much better than these guys. Uh, well, our situation is a little different. Really? How so? We've been through this kind of thing before. If we didn't warn Hado, then he wouldn't take it seriously and something would eventually happen. As his brothers, we have to help him. But it doesn't look like you're helping. Huh? Maybe Klee doesn't understand everything. But my mommy told me that you help someone to make them feel happy, not to make yourself happy. 
Hado sure doesn't look very happy. Why don't you ask him what he needs? Hmm. Kree's right, you know. You three need to open up and talk things through. You are brothers, after all. <sighs> I, um... Ahem. <clears throat> I've always cared a lot about you, Hado. Just like when we were back in the desert. You suddenly passed out, and Jeremy and I started arguing. Eventually, all three of us ended up in this domain. I'm just worried that something similar could happen again. If you were to pass out and with nobody around to help you... I know. But this domain is nowhere near as dangerous as the desert. I was thinking that if I could handle these problems myself, then you two wouldn't have to argue about anything. If it weren't for my poor health and lack of energy all the time, then I wouldn't have always been such a burden on you two. No need to feel guilty, Hado. This was our choice. The three of us love adventuring. No one is a burden on anyone. Isn't that why we came up with the idea for this area? I would do the thinking, Ferdinand would use his muscle, and you would... Draw the blueprints and build tracks. It'll be a safe way to see all kinds of amazing scenery. Yes, that was the plan. Hey, what are you trying to say? You make it sound like I've only been trying to talk myself up. The choo-choo cart is great, Ferdinand. Really? You know, Klee, having the car zip along the tracks was my idea. Yeah, what an amazing idea! You're so smart! Hey, Klee, do you want to ride even more fun carts? Three of them are trying to win Klee's approval now. Klee hasn't realized it yet, but her innocent, childlike nature is very powerful. It can inspire and even help heal others. Hey, everyone. Please come with me. We need to get the Hydro Idolin in the cart to help us. Good. Torrential Twister is ready to run now. Let's go to the station at the start of the track. Hado and I have double-checked everything. It's all operating safely. You can go for a ride now. Hold on a sec. Before we say goodbye, I have something I'd like to give you all. It's a rock climbing rope. We used it on our adventures to climb mountains and traverse many places. Huh? But doesn't it mean a lot to you? Are you sure you want to give it to us? Yes, of course. Please take it. Thanks to Klee and everyone else's help, we realize that there's a special bond that keeps us together. Even though it's invisible, it's even more important than rope. We can always hold on to it through tough situations. Huh? I helped? <laughs> yes, Klee. You are a big help. Even bigger than that huge thing in the middle of this place? Yes. Much bigger. Wow, that's huge! I'm so happy! By the way, have you ever seen anything like the choo-choo cart in the outside world? 
Nope. Today was the first time I rode anything like it. Is that so? <coughs> I guess I'm not surprised. Seems you won't find Torrential Twister anywhere else. Be sure to come back and ride the choo-choo carts again while you still have the chance. Yep, I will. Sorry to bother our young mage, but there's something a master thief would like to report. Do you still remember our mission? Uh-oh. I was having so much fun that I almost forgot. We're supposed to be helping Adia look for the missing components. But don't worry. I've already got one. You mean you snatched it when we weren't looking? <laughs> I didn't have to go that far. In fact, the component we were searching for was actually that orange rope. If anything, you could say it came right into our hands at the right time. Let's head back and give it to Adia. Aw, do we really have to go? <sighs> okay, even though I want to keep playing, I know Adia is really important. That's our wise mage. <sighs> Don't worry. Tonight, you'll be able to see stars in the water and watch fish dance in the sky. Uh, seems Kokomi's out of it after that ride. Her face is completely blank and her lip was trembling while she was speaking. <sighs> Maybe we should have a rest for a while. Uh, huh? I thought I was keeping my composure pretty well. Don't worry, my mind is always spinning. I'm used to this. We should head back to Idea. How about we hold hands, Miss General? Klee will give you energy. Uh huh? After holding Klee's hand, the stars in the sky and the fish in the water have all disappeared. I must have been seeing things from riding the cart. <sighs> hmm? What are you smiling about, Kokomi? 
Tomorrow. I'm a little tired now. Hmm. Seems she had a little too much fun and now she's about to crash. <laughs> I think it's time for a rest. Good idea. I think we could all use some downtime. Thanks for giving me some energy, Klee. Then we'll see you later. Sounds like our young mage enjoyed herself. I'm so happy that she had a good time. So, back to the missing component. Did you bring it? You bet! Kaya said that the missing component was this orange climbing rope. Ah, it just occurred to me that you probably ran into the three brothers while you were in the canyon. If I remember correctly, the two eldest brothers were taking their sickly younger brother on adventures when they ran into a sandstorm and ended up here. They were all arguing with one another when they first arrived, but it wasn't long before they broke down and were huddled together in tears. Oh, they sure must have a lot of energy to keep up their bickering and adventuring every day. I'm a little worried about them, yet quite envious of all that energy. <laughs> You almost sound as if you're reminiscing about old friends, Idia. Yes, I've known them for quite some time after all. But I seldom go to that area. You can hold on to the rope for now, Traveler. I have no use for it until we have the other components. By the way, Eula and Kale have also returned, but I'm afraid they weren't able to make much headway. They mentioned that they would like to head to the jungle north of here, once you have all rested up. Now that I've told you everything, I'll go rest. Uh, I mean, I'll go and check on the situation in the remaining two areas. Do you need me to accompany you? Oh, uh, no, it's all right. You've already accomplished a lot today. You should rest up. Kali and Yua! Oh, Adia is here too! Hey, it's the Traveler and Paimon! How are you? Did you rest well? Yep, this is a comfortable place to rest. I guess that's one thing here that's better than the desert. But other than that, there's not much going for this place. Saying things like that isn't going to help, Adia. But it's the truth. The desert is full of terrible memories for me. Being there was like... Yeah, like wading through thick mud. That's a weird way to put it. Hmm. Actually, if you hadn't mentioned it, Paimon would have already forgotten that this domain is in the desert. I know what you mean. The air here isn't at all like the desert. It's very humid. Almost as if we're in the rainforest. It's a very familiar feeling for me. <sighs> Everyone looks well-rested. If you're ready, we can start making our way to the jungle north of here. Good luck, everyone! I'll be rooting for ya! Hold on. I said we, didn't I? No need to say goodbye, because you're coming too. Huh? But wait, I I'm, I'm just the mascot! 
You can't back out this time, Adia. The manager of the fairgrounds is waiting to see you. She said Adia is the only person who could help. Yes, Kale and I discovered a fairgrounds in the forest. The person in charge of it seems to be a Spotamod scholar. A scholar? But what's she doing there? Researching the forest ley lines? Oh, I wish there were ley lines here that I could ever study. Anyway, I know who you're talking about. I'd better come along then. Oh, finally, someone has arrived. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mimuna. We've brought Adia with us. Thank you, Kale. It's been quite some time since I've seen you, Idia. To be honest, I didn't think you'd actually show up. If anything, I thought you'd be curled up somewhere crying alone. Hey, you shouldn't be saying things like that. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be the first time Hymon's heard someone say that about Adia, though. You wanna see me cry? Fine! I'll stop crying right here! Uh, no, please don't! Alright, alright, I shouldn't have said that. Now, who are these two? And Paimon is Paimon! They're reliable helpers! Lucky for you that I found them! You'd better be more careful about how you speak to them, okay? Of course. Good to meet you. You may call me Maymuna. For the sake of time, we should forego the usual pleasantries. Please follow me. Take it easy. Fun would a fairground be without a tent, right? Really? Oh, Paimon knew you couldn't be so pathetic. You just act modest all the time to hide your actual abilities. Uh, huh? What is it, Kale? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should tell you. I'm afraid it might dampen the mood. It's not important. Please, just speak your mind. Uh, well... There are lots of vendor booths set up here, but there's no one running them. In fact, there's no one at this fair at all. <laughs> it looks pretty deserted. The truth is, this used to be an exciting and bustling place. But just a few days ago, something happened, and it seemed like... Like... The world was suddenly flipped upside down? Yes, exactly. Something fell from the central hub into the tent and knocked down the crystal light that was hanging at the top. Oh, the crystal light. Mm-hmm. I remember a certain someone said that we should have beautiful lights to celebrate at a fair, and made us that crystal light. But once the light fell, the tent became a complete mess and the Hydro Idolins were trapped inside. Just when I was at my wit's end, a man from the Lawrence clan came and offered his assistance. Wait, he offered to help you? Yes, and he refused to listen to any of my warnings. He just walked straight into the tent, and then... Yes? And then? And that's it. He became trapped inside along with the Hydro Idolins. Oh no! We have to do something! We can't just leave him there, Maymuna! I know, but the situation inside might be more difficult than you think. You should mentally prepare yourselves. 
just talking about it is a waste of time. Since we're already here, let's go and scout out the situation ourselves. <sighs> All right. This way, please. There used to be a large stage inside, but after everything got shaken up, it seems the very nature of the entire place was altered. The lamps and crystal light that were hanging above have all fallen down, which makes repairs near impossible. Wait, so you mean it's difficult to move around in there? Yes, mainly because of the lights. Do any of you have experience being on stage? Once the stage lights turn on, everyone's attention is focused on you. can't stand that feeling. Having everyone's attention focus solely on me would just make me feel terrible. Me too! I'm no good at speaking in front of people. And then to have everyone staring at you? Oh, just the thought of it makes me shudder. Sounds like you have some things you haven't been able to let go of yet. <sighs> Please don't laugh. I'm trying my best to change that, but... There are still some things I can't overcome. Like when there's a lot of people around, or when people are staring at me. No, there's nothing funny about that. And you know what? It's not a bad thing to care when other people are looking. That's my opinion anyway. Think about it. Only people who have high standards for themselves would worry about failing to meet others' expectations. You have many good qualities, Kale. I bet if you had to learn dance since childhood like myself, then you'd be an even better dancer than me. No, no way! <laughs> that would be impossible! I can relate. I know exactly how she feels. Maybe we should find a time for you to learn with me. And one day, you will become an outstanding dancer too. By that time, you'll be so focused on performing your beautiful moves that you'll no longer worry about an audience watching you. Passionate about this that she's practically glowing now. Really? You do that? You wouldn't think I look stupid and secretly laugh at me, would you? <laughs> you really think I'm that kind of person? Fine. Vengeance will be mine. Oh, no! Of course not! A all right. Please teach me. Seems there's no need for me to warn you again. Anyway, you just need to open the curtain and you'll be able to see the stage. Let's figure out a way to fix this. Looks like we need to raise the platform underneath the crystal light. If I remember correctly, the stage controls should be somewhere around here. to use the colorful lens to make the light change colors. One way of shining new light on the problem. Hey, Maimuna? Do you happen to know someone named Sino? No, never heard that name before. Why do you ask? Oh, never mind then. I was just thinking you two would have a lot in common. <clears throat> Back to the situation at hand. We should probably head into the passageway that opened now. Hello? Is anyone here? If you can hear me, please help! 
Lessig Lawrence? Who are you? Who has the audacity to utter my full name? Uh, you sure don't look like you're in any condition to be talking like that. Yep, he's a member of the Lawrence clan, all right. Even though he's hanging on by a thread, he still insists on clinging to meaningless etiquette. You. What are you doing here? Huh. Have you come here to mock me, Eula? If you would just think for a moment, it should be pretty obvious why we are here. Yet, now you are intentionally trying to provoke me? Of course, you don't have to accept my help. After all, aristocrats are naturally superior and need no help from others. Yes, thanks for the reminder. I don't need help from the likes of you. I don't think he really means it, Eula. His tone was harsh, but he keeps glancing at you from the corner of his eyes. It's my opinion as a healer that he needs help. Okay. <laughs> he's been trapped for so long that it seems he's forgotten how to hold a decent conversation. <laughs> how ridiculous. Let's go. We'll leave the stage to this person who'd rather save face than save his own life. Hey, no, no, wait! Uh, halt! You cannot just leave me here. We're both of the Lawrence bloodline, after all. Helping me when necessary certainly won't tarnish your prestige. If anything, my embarrassing predicament will be overshadowed by your virtuous deed. We must uphold the prestige and dignity of the family. This is the best reason you could come up with? You think tacking on the word family will be enough to talk me into helping you? You should be ashamed for your careless actions. It's because of you that we all had to come here. I... Uh... Seems everyone in the Lawrence clan is this way. They'll do anything to save face. All right, all right. Looks like it's time for the mascot to step in. Here you go. One for Eula, and one for Lessig. What is this? Candy? Uh, thanks. Oh, the smell. It's just like the aroma I smelled coming from the lens. Yes, that's right. Enjoying something sweet always lightens the mood. Oh, thank you, Miss Mascot. I certainly do feel much better now. <laughs> so he's willing to thank someone else, but not me. Eula has been worrying about you the past few days, and asked me several times regarding how to find you. But now that you two have been reunited, I won't have to keep answering her questions anymore! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy! Let me clarify one thing. I don't care what happens to him. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Eula will never admit that she actually cares about him. Yeah, you're probably right. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Uh, then at least give me another piece of candy. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure! Uh, I still have more! Sorry, I admit my mistake. I know I've caused heaps of trouble for all of you. <laughs> Why couldn't you have just said that earlier? I'm back. Oh? Have you already finished catching up? Why are you all looking at me? Oh, uh, nothing. Don't mind us. All right. Then let's clean things up here and keep working our way toward getting the crystal light fixed. Ah, there's no need to push yourself in your condition, Lessig. I'll take him and find some place for him to rest. I happen to be a little tired myself. All right. I'll leave my cousin to you then. You'd better rest up and regain your strength before we settle things, Lessig. Now, 
let's see if there's any way to keep raising the platform higher. We probably will need to find a mechanism that's like a lamp. Strange. Is that really the Lessig that I know? You shouldn't always judge people based on the way you knew them before. People change, and people can always make different choices. Hmm. Dolan. It must have been trapped in the curtain, but at least it seems to be okay. a magical tent after all. The inside is much larger than it appears from the outside. Haven't you heard stories? Oh, another path has appeared! This should be the last level! Yes, don't worry. We're almost to the top of the tent. The last thing we need to do is raise the crystal light to the very top of the tent. After the stage collapsed, I realized that having it raised only halfway makes it look a lot like the stage at the Grand Bazaar. Have any of you visited the Grand Bazaar before? No, I haven't. I have. I've gone there a few times with Master Tainari. The place is bustling with all kinds of vendors. And if you're lucky, you can see Nilu perform her dance. Oh, a dance from Sumeru? <laughs> I'd like to see that myself. Hmm. If only it were on the way back, then we could stop there. It doesn't matter if it's on the way or not. I would be happy to take you whenever you have time, Eula. Great. I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah! Hmm. Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've already been there more times than Paimon can remember! Really? My father used to help with festivities at the Grand Bazaar and would always give me candy during the events. I was just a kid and didn't understand anything. I was happy as long as he gave me some candy. To me... Fairs and festivals were the best things ever. I always thought my father was amazing, and wanted to be just like him when I grew up. But aren't you a scholar in the academia, Mimuna? As far as I know, scholars seldom could spend time doing anything but research. I doubt you could have time to assist your father in preparing festivities. Yeah, seems you read me like a book. When I had the choice between becoming who I wanted to be and who my parents wanted me to be, I ended up choosing the latter, but I was never happy about it. Huh. That's almost the exact opposite of Eula's situation. You must have already realized that. Why else would you set up all the booths here and make this place like a fairgrounds? Yes, but I'm still not as happy as I imagined I would be. I realized that attending a fair and running a fair are two completely different things. The main reason my childhood was so fun and carefree is because my family worked hard. But my father knew how difficult and tiring running a fair could be, so he wanted to push me towards academics. <sighs> but in the end, I didn't do well in either. I gave up on myself and resorted to investigating ley lines in the desert. Some things happened and then I accidentally ended up here. I finally had a chance to make my wish of running a fair come true. But after seeing everything come crashing down, I feel like I've lost the strength to go on. It's not as bad as you make it out to be, Mimuna. No need to feel so down. You have the courage to change, and you've been actively guiding us on this journey. Someone who's given up on themselves could never do these things. Oh, Kale. I understand my situation better than anyone. You don't need to try to comfort me. It's not that I'm trying to comfort you. It's just that 
People sometimes don't realize that their actions speak louder than words. Believe me, this is something that I learned from my time together with Eula. Oh? What are you trying to say? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing. <clears throat> now, let's get that crystal light fixed. All right. Good. That should do it. you so long but don't worry Lessig is recovering well <laughs> I'm pretty good at taking care of people seems I found another good thing about myself I don't know if I should be worried for him or <laughs> happy for her uh, the shadow it's massive uh, wait Shadow just now, it's... <sighs> uh, uh, seems he still might need a little more time to recover. Tell me, did everything go well for you all? Of course. With a team like the Traveler, Paimon, Kale, and Eula, they're at least 40 times more reliable than you ever were. Only 40 times more reliable? <laughs> that means I'm still pretty good then. <sighs> I guess it's impossible to feel like you've lost once you've already given up. I'm a little concerned about how comfortable you are with that. Huh? What has happened? How did I get outside of the tent? Ah, oh, that's right. I remember meeting Eula, and then... And then... Oh, my head. Oh, you're awake now. Uh, don't worry. Th that's just a side effect of your treatment, Lessig. I'm afraid I still feel a little disoriented. Lessig Lawrence? Oh, it's you, Eula. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'll come back to Mondstadt with you and abandon my wild efforts to restore the Lawrence clan. Interesting. Now you want to talk. Seems like you've had a change of heart. In that case, maybe you'll be able to explain everything in detail for us now. I... Uh, I admit it, yes. I came here in hopes of finding a way to restore the Lawrence clan to its former glory. But it was a long journey, and I didn't always know the way. 
I passed through Liyue and Sumeru. There was even a time when I lost my wallet and had to live in the wild. But the peculiar thing is, I realized that nobody knew me out there. And not a single person even cared about the Lawrence clan. You and I are like glass pawns that were raised in shackles. We were taught to act like nobles, but outside the walls of our home, the people of Mondstadt despised us. Such pompous, hateful, and stubborn teaching. It all culminated to making us cling to the old aristocratic dogma in an attempt to maintain our pride. It's like a never-ending game of tug-of-war, but it is meaningless. You understand. Or I should say, you have already long understood. But I'm afraid that I have only just realized this. Hmm. Paimon sort of understands what Leseg is saying. Everything he said is true. Your family is probably unaware that you've already changed how you see things. Yes. This has all happened recently. After coming to this domain, I realized the Mondstadt that I want is one where not everyone fears me. All that I and many other members of the Lawrence clan long for is a place where we can live peacefully with others. Lessig. Both you and I never had anything to do with the glory of the Lawrence clan. That is all in the past. We are just ordinary people. <sighs> I originally planned on returning to Mondstadt after taking care of things here. I never thought you would come here. I was completely shocked, which is why I reacted like I did. I'm sorry. See? People can always make different choices. And it seems that Lasik has also chosen to become someone he truly wants to be. <clears throat> yes, about that. I'm afraid I haven't quite found my own purpose in life yet. That's all right. Being able to clearly choose between becoming who you want to be and who your parents wanted you to be is already a step in the right direction. How to find true happiness is probably one of the most difficult research topics of all. I have a suggestion for you, Lessig. Why don't you return to Mondstadt and tell your parents what you just told us? <laughs> They'll probably try to tear me limb from limb. But what about you? Did you ever tell your family about what you think? This is something that I've been thinking about, too. Perhaps the two of us can sit down with the rest of the clan and discuss it with them. The Lawrence clan is just like this stage. It was once home to glorious performances, but those days are now long gone, and it is time for the stage to be updated. She's so solid and tough, but also clear and open, like an ice cube. Is that why she's able to dance any time and anywhere she wishes? Um, are you all done talking now? Yes, I think so. By the way, that is for you. Please take it. I found it on Lessig earlier. Well, you didn't ask. All right, I admit it. I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, we'll let the Traveler hold on to it for now. Hmm? Wait, this looks like... It looks pretty familiar. Have we seen one of these before? Ah, right! I also bought a similar box at the last festival. Yes, people often use this kind of box for candy at festivals. This was one of the materials originally used to create the tent. But now that the tent has been repaired, we no longer need it. Eating the candy from the box as an adult will never be as delicious as it was when you were a kid. But if you really think about it, there are way more things you can eat as an adult. As of now, we've already collected three of the missing components! Only one more to go! 
I'm sorry that repairing the tent took so much of everyone's time. You should all head back and have a rest. I'll lead the way. to the forest went smoothly? Yep, you could say that. How about you? Up to anything today? Well, I suppose it's time I told you that as the Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island, I shouldn't actually be here now. The truth is that a relic known as the Shinro Casket was lost from Watatsumi Island long ago. But recently, an orb matching the relic's description suddenly began emitting light, Almost as if it was guiding people to it. Hmm. This is what led me to find the relic's whereabouts. I wasn't lying when I said that. Coral has often told me that sitting at home reading light novels is not the best of practices, and that I should try to get out more. As I made my way from Watatsumi Island to Sumeru, I enjoyed a variety of breathtaking sights. <sighs> It really is a beautiful nation. I even stayed in the rainforest for several days. I was surprised to find that the relic had ended up in the desert. I knew it was somewhere here, but I still couldn't pinpoint the exact location. Though I feel that Idea was not intentionally trying to hide anything from us, this domain does have plenty of secrets. I'm sure you've sensed that too. It. A lot did happen today. Hmm, I see. When you found Lessig, did you also happen to find any clues related to this domain? I'm afraid that he was caught up in his thoughts and didn't pay attention to his surroundings. Actually, before the world was flipped upside down, this domain didn't look anything like this. Hey, everyone! Oh, huh. I hope we're not interrupting your conversation. It's alright. You two did a lot today. Care to join me for a cup of tea? Sure! <laughs> that would be perfect! Yula and I just made some snacks! Turns out, Idea has a cooking stove and oven. Seriously, why didn't she mention it earlier? Oh, so did you make us some moon pies? No, I made something called storm crust pie. You should try one, Traveler. And I made some pita pockets. You can try some, Kokumi. It should taste great with tea. Uh, sorry, I should call you General. Oh, I would be happy to try some. By the way, Yula... How's your cousin doing now? Oh, him. <laughs> you would never guess, but he's busy over by the oven now. Really? You do that? Oh, but that's too much. I can't. No, really, it's all right. We want to do everything we can for the Domain. Yes, and to be completely fair, I'm the one who caused this terrible mess in the first place. Oh? What happened? Did Paima miss something? Hello, you two. Lessig was just telling us what happened. Perhaps you should allow me to explain. <clears throat> I'm afraid it was I who caused all this trouble in the Domain. Ah, <sighs> yes. It was Lessig. To be precise, I saw a most exquisite water orb at the entrance of the Domain. It reminded me of an astrolabe my grandfather gave me when I was seven years old. I was curious if it could rotate, so I reached out and touched it. 
Little did I know that it was the core of this entire domain. <clears throat> what I mean to say is, I knew something was wrong as soon as the whole place started flipping. It's not just your fault. I failed in my responsibilities as the caretaker here. Oh, I knew I should have put the core somewhere more secure. Oh, you mean the big ball of water at the entrance? Yes, that's the one. Anyway, after giving it some thought, Lessig has offered to perform some more repairs and maintenance to help support the domain. But we were concerned he wouldn't be able to handle it all alone, so Yula and I will also stay here to lend him a hand. But don't be mistaken. I'm not doing this out of the kindness of my heart like Kale. My job is purely to monitor and ensure that Lessig doesn't cause any more trouble here. Oh! Sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone's buying that anymore, Eula. Though I do remember that Amber mentioned we should just nod and agree when you act like this. <clears throat> uh, right. Uh, you better not slack off today, Lessig. Ah, uh, no. I I'll get right to work. <laughs> Either way, Lessig is going to be in charge of making lunch for everyone today. Yes, I'll do my best. No need to worry. What was that? No, I mean... Thanks, everyone, for giving me a chance to redeem myself. I can already feel new strength kindled inside me! Ha ha ha! Ah, no, maybe that's just the heat of the oven. Very good. Uh, but you should conserve your strength. Many parts of the domain are still in disrepair, so we have a lot to investigate. Seems Adia has a little more pep in her step after finding others to help do the work. Now that you three are situated, we can focus on what the rest of us will be doing today. I'll go gather the others. We should get ready to leave as soon as possible. And there she goes. At least she seems to be happy. Maybe this is how it feels to be in charge. Where are we going now? We're going to retrieve the last missing component. My working theory is that the director listed on the sign has it. Ah, uh, no detail slips by our general. Uh, what's a director? A director is a kind of job. The one we're looking for is named Zosimos. Zosimos is responsible for managing everything that happens on the stage. Similar to how Idea is responsible for managing the whole realm. Wow! Sounds like Miss Idea must be way busier! You'd think so, wouldn't you? Can't you comment on that at all, Idea? Ah, uh, maybe someone else can explain. I'm just enjoying taking it easy, as you. The director doesn't get out much. He's almost always cooped up in his treehouse making props or writing scripts. But I'm trying to remember now. Where is that treehouse of his? Huh? You don't remember? Hey, don't forget! I'm just the mascot. <laughs> I believe it's that way. Though he might prefer to be alone, given he often has to move stage props, I suspect that he lives near the theater. And having a view of the entire stage would be useful when imagining a production's actual stage flow. So if I were him, I'd probably pick a treehouse over there. But how do you know which direction the theater is in? Ah, uh, simple. The overall layout and decorations look more exciting in that direction. Oh, good point! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that?
Where did that blasted automation mechanism go? Huh. The male actor standees are here, but where are the female ones? Hmm? Uh, uh, who's that? Idea? Yes, Sosimos! Tis I, Idea! How's that for a dramatic entrance? This is a surprise. I was sure you'd be... Curled up in a fetal position, crying to yourself? Wow, what a fascinating little creature. Did you just read my mind? The name's Paimon? And no, Paimon's no mind reader. Just call it an educated guess. <laughs> it seems everyone shares a similar opinion about you, Idea. I knew from the start that a managerial role wasn't for me. But I found my true calling now. As a mascot! Mascot? Is that a new role? I don't remember casting you for that. Okay, enough about me. I'm just here to introduce you to some new friends of mine. And that's why we came to see you. Well, do you have the component that fell out of the central hub? I do. However... Uh, I'm afraid the incident has caused many malfunctions with the stage mechanisms, and I can no longer put on any performances. Okay, so you're holding the component ransom till we help you fix the mechanisms, huh? No, till we fix the stage, surely. Uh, I'd have thought he wants us to make some more props, no? Given that some of the standees are missing. Oh. Uh... Or maybe the component is broken, and we need to fix it. You're all forgetting that the majority of his work involves writing scripts. I'll wager that he wants us to edit them. The, what has gotten into you all? What sort of person do you take me for, hmm? The component is safe and sound. I can give it to you now if you'd like. Although I was hoping that... Maybe you might be willing to help rescue my show? You're a big group. I have lots of roles to fill. It would really speed up the casting. A show? <laughs> that sounds fun! I want to help! Can we? Can we? Also, truth be told, I've hit a bit of a roadblock in my script and was just thinking about how to move the story forward. And then you all showed up. Suddenly, I got my muse back. I don't know how to explain it, but something about seeing all of you finally helped me figure out how to continue my script. Huh? You mean that story you've been stuck on forever? Are you serious? You really think you can finish it now? Yes, really. Just give me a little time, and I'll write it all up. In the meantime, I'll leave things to you, Idea. To write the script! Ah, oh, Zosimos has always wanted to write an epic story about a thief and a mage. Apparently, he got the idea from some rumors that were swirling around, but he only got as far as writing the intro before writer's block set in. Why don't you all take some time for yourselves while I see what I can do? We'll reconvene after the director finishes the script. A director, my friends, is a storyteller. And the key ingredient to every good story is inspiration. The moment I laid eyes on General Sangonomiya, inspiration hit me for a brand new character. The heroine was the missing piece of the puzzle. The rest of the story flowed naturally from there, and now it's finished. So please, take a look through your scripts, and we will tell this story together. Well, is everything clear? Uh, Director Zosimos, how do you pronounce this word? Let me see. Ah, that's sojourn. It means to stay for a while. This is a very cute moment, so let's make sure that comes through in the performance. Oh, wait. There's another word I 
don't know here. It's okay, Klee. We can go through your lines together a few more times after this meeting's over. That would be most appreciated, Kaya. I had a feeling about you, actually. You seem to know a thing or two about character acting. Tell me, have you acted before? <laughs> You're too kind. It's all in the script, really. It just rolls off the tongue. Oh, you think so? Well, you definitely have a knack for it. I've actually been looking out for someone with your talent. If I make it as a big-time director, then I can see us working together for the long term. Be sure to stay in touch, okay? You and I are gonna go places. What can I say? Sounds good to me. Great. Fantastic. Uh, now then, please go through your scripts one more time. But don't just read the words. Remember my notes. And really let the character inhabit you. I need to have a look at the stage, so I'll leave you to it. If you need me for anything, I'll be in the big theater right in the center of this area. Hmm. Wonder what the theaters are like here. Let's go check it out while everyone's still getting ready. Where did it go? I put it right here. Hey, Zosimos! What you up to? Oh, it's you two. Please, come here. Feast your eyes on this stage. I designed it myself. So, directors have to design the stage too? Oh, <laughs> I'm no ordinary director. I take a more holistic approach. Directing, script writing, stage design, I do it all. Sounds like a lot of work. Idea wouldn't be able to handle that kind of job. Idea has her work cut out for her too, you know. She's my one and only member of the audience. Though she often criticizes my shows. Well, she just says what she thinks. You don't know how to write, or this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's because I use preprints in a way that she feels goes against what they're intended for. But even though she's my harshest critic, she's also been my biggest supporter in a lot of ways. I guess you could say she's like my agent. I'm very grateful to her. I've always dreamed of being a director, but I've never had the chance until I came here. So, what did you do before you came here? Like I said, I dreamed. <laughs> From a young age. Every time I came home after a show, I'd go over the story again and again in my mind. Growing up, my biggest aspiration was to be a director. Unfortunately, I couldn't offer much beyond my practical skills, so I ended up spending most of my time as a prop designer and doing a bit of set design on the side. Don't get me wrong, I do love building the set, but nothing satisfies me more than putting on my very own show. You only wrote director on the sign. <laughs> exactly. You're not doing a great job of convincing me that you're not a mind reader. By the way, could I ask you for your help with something? I'm having trouble finding the master script, and I'll need it shortly. The one you only just finished writing? You lost it already? Yeah. After I handed everyone their copies, I held on to my master copy while I was checking on everything around the theater. I must have dropped it somewhere. If it's not here, then it might be in the attic. These are the only two places I've been since I finished writing it. But, ugh, I still have some things to do to get the stage ready. 
Would you two mind having a look for me? No problem. We'll find it. Take it easy. Droplet has been managing them for the director. Hmm. Most of them look like works in progress. Ah, then it should be the one that's finished. Okay, let's look for the thickest one and then check the ending. This is the only script that fits the bill. Plus, it looks pretty new. This must be the master script. Director Zosimos! Zosimos, we got your script! Ah, thank you. That's a huge help. Uh, I'm running out of time here. There's no way I'll be able to fix everything up perfectly. We may just have to wing it. Anyway, the stage is secondary. The performance is what really matters. Things can always go wrong on stage. But as long as the show goes on, it should be fine. You don't sound very confident in what you're saying. It's true. I realize now that a show is the art of the unknown. Even if you have the same actors performing on the same stage, the performance will be slightly different every time. Those subtle differences are what make each performance special. Uh, okay. One last request. Traveler, you can enter the preprints, yes? The truth is that my sets are composed entirely of preprints. First, I use materials to make the objects. Then I take those objects and turn them into the preprint. Now, of course, preprints are really meant for making objects to furnish the domain. So using objects to create preprints is, strictly speaking, the reverse of what this is intended for. But Idea said that if this is what I really want to do, she's not going to stand in my way. Ah, so that's what you meant earlier. Okay, well, what do you need us to do? I'd like the Traveler to go into the preprint set and help move props around during the performance. The reason is... Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> gets it now. If you're busy directing, moving the props, and operating all the mechanisms, you never get the chance to watch the show. Yes. I know that I'm no master playwright, but still. Even if it really is a half-baked script, with shoddy writing and moments of sheer ridiculousness, I'd still like to see it for myself. Just once. Hard to turn a guy down after a speech like that. Thank you. Genuinely, I'm so grateful. I'll go and inform the others. Then, as soon as you're ready, the show can begin. Long, long ago, there was a great thief. He lived in a land where the light did not shine where all suffered in the darkness. Uh, people call me? Sorry, Kaya. Directly into the microphone, please. Otherwise your voice will... you know. Okay. <clears throat> they call me the Dagger Bandit, but no one sees that I rob the rich and give to the poor. Here in the dark, 
evildoers run rampant in the shadows, while the good, honest folk stumble blindly on, just trying to find a way through. As the bandit brooded, suddenly the world was inexplicably changed as a single star appeared on the horizon and flew across the sky. Traveler, stomp on that movement mechanism in front of you. Light, a brief flash, yet enough to illuminate the world. find the source of that light, I can shine it into the darkness, and the people will suffer in blindness no longer. Without a moment to spare, he set off to follow the star's course. All the while, the star kept moving through the sky. Um, Traveler, the star kept moving through the sky. Looks like I have to go through the desert. This could get dangerous. If everything he'd heard was to be believed, the desert ahead was a no-man's land filled with horrors. Worse still, the star had landed in the most difficult-to-reach location, surrounded by sheer cliffs. But he was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. The Dagger Bandit trekked deep into the desert wasteland. Yet when he finally arrived at his destination, he found not a fallen star, but a young girl, dressed in white. How strange. I'm positive this is where the star landed. Young lady, do you know where the light has gone? The girl replied, Traveler from afar, the light you seek is only a bottled flame. But the flame has now died, and its light is long gone. A uh, bottled flame? Yes, it was a gift from another. And so, the girl began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The girl hailed from a kingdom that sat atop the waterfalls. But when the reigning dynasty fell and a new one seized power, she and her people fled for their lives. A thick fog began to fill the air as she made her way through the forest, and dense thickets tried to block her path. There is a mechanism down there that you can press to retract the thicket board below the stage. If I only had a lamp to guide me through this wretched forest, then I could survive. With scratches covering her arms and legs, the girl pressed through the pain and made her way forward. The road ahead was arduous, but she was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. But, just as she was drawing near her destination, 
a huge stretch of thorns and brambles suddenly came into view. Despair set in and began to weigh on her heart. If only someone could help me, I would give anything in return. The girl's heartfelt wish in her moment of desperation did not go unheard. Wait, wait, wait! There's no mechanism for the final thicket! Ugh, I must have forgotten to check those boards. According to the story, those thickets should be gone from the stage now, right? Yes, total oversight on my part. Ugh, what a pain. I can help! Traveler, catch! The girl's heartfelt wish did not go unheard, for a Jumpy Dumpty, who was passing by, helped to clear a path for her. Oh, thank you, Jumpy Dumpty. And so the girl continued her journey deeper into the forest. But what she found there was not a lamp, but a mage glowing with fire. So, just to clarify, it was supposed to be the mage who helped burn a path through the thicket. <laughs> Save it for the end, man! The mage took pity on the girl and handed her a bottle. Then, the mage began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The fiery mage had an adventurous spirit and enjoyed taking long journeys. On one such journey, while taking rest in an oasis, she found a beautiful bottle by a crescent-shaped lake. Klee, quick, get in the light. Coming! She was an extraordinary mage with the power to grant people their wishes. She turned the bottle into a thing of equally extraordinary power. But the only place that it could make wishes come true was inside of the bottle. Oh me, oh my, look at this wonderful bottle of mine. It could make a fine toy. But better still, a sojourner's home. The fiery mage blew into the bottle, allowing it to grant one single wish outside its glass walls. Supposed to blow into it? Whew. Whoa, it lit up! A flame was kindled within the bottle, and it began to glow a fiery red, just like the mage herself. After the mage finished telling her story, she disappeared, leaving only the bottle behind. A magic bottle that can grant wishes. And I wish to leave this place and go somewhere where no one will ever find me again. And then? The bottle seemed to softly inquire. I don't know. The flame in the bottle faded as the girl's single wish was granted. And she found herself in the middle of the desert, far away where no one could ever find her. When the Dagger Bandit listened to her story, he sighed in disappointment that the flame with the power to grant wishes outside of the bottle had already died. But this doesn't make sense. If it truly granted my wish, then nobody should have been able to find me here. Maybe they shouldn't. The desert is difficult and dangerous to navigate, but I was determined to make it, no matter what. Then take this bottle with you for your trouble. It may be able to grant you your wish, though sadly, only within the confines of the bottle itself. All I wish for is light. Honoring the bandit's request, the girl wished for light inside the bottle. And sure enough, it lit up. They found that while the light was only generated within, it could nonetheless shine through the glass and reach anywhere in the outside world. 
even though it doesn't burn as brilliantly as the light that shone before, this is still an extraordinary light. What will you do after I take the bottle? I don't know. Well, then maybe you should come back with me. With no reason to refuse, the girl accompanied the dagger bandit back to the land where the light did not shine. They brought light to that place, and the darkness was dispersed, and they lived happily ever after. Director? Oh, no one's ever called me that before. Thank you, my dear little mage. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. Miss Dia said that she tailored it a little bit so it would fit me. But you were the one who designed and made it. You're amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And it sounds like Adia did a great job, too. It was nothing, really. Just one of those, oh no, whatever shall I wear to the ball moments. Something comes in handy at times like that. Sewing is an art in its own right. You're more talented than you give yourself credit for, Idea. Really? Oh, uh, I, I'm just gonna go for a second. Please, chat amongst yourselves. She gets embarrassed so easily. She really can't handle being in the spotlight. Idea's a sensitive person and doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. I hope all the excitement hasn't brought her to tears. Oh, I'm a little worried. Don't worry. I'll go make sure she's okay. I'll see you all later. So, what did you all think of the play? Any thoughts? Huh? Uh-oh. Time to get serious. Now, are you sure you want to hear what we really think? Oh, absolutely! I had the courage to ask, didn't I? So, don't mince your words. Go ahead. Speak your mind. I can take it. Okay. Hi, Mom will go first. So, the dialogue at the beginning was pretty good, but it ran out of steam as the story went on. Paimon could tell that you ran out of inspiration somewhere along the way. The characters were honestly a little bit ridiculous. Paimon didn't get what you were trying to do. The moment anyone started to show any kind of substance, suddenly the scene was over. Yes, all very good points, Paimon. I would add that in its attempt to pay tribute to the series A Thousand Nights, all semblance of a coherent was sacrificed. Plus, I do have to penalize you for the issues with the props. Miss Idea? What are you doing back here? Oh, you know, I return like the tide when people start discussing something important. Huh, especially when it has to do with criticizing my show. Mm-hmm, but there was one thing I liked about it. Just one, mind you. The story had a good ending. You think so? I thought I was letting him off lightly. Idea? Could I borrow you for a moment? Oh, sure. Excuse me for a moment. Back to you, Paimon. Keep up the good criticism. Okay. In that case, Paimon did have one other complaint. Let's hear it. Taking criticism on the chin is all part of being a director. The ending was all wrong. The girl's motives were clear and simple the whole way through. It was kind of jarring when all she had to say was, I don't know. And doesn't 
anyone else find it weird how her whole community was on the run, but she was only looking out for herself the whole time? I'm fine. I'm not going to improve without feedback. I also learned a lot this time with the chance to be off stage. To be honest, it was a dream come true. What a great attitude. You don't seem upset at all by our comments. I wouldn't say I'm completely unaffected, but you're only speaking the truth. They're all very valid points. Still, now that Paimon thinks about it, you did finish the script in a bit of a rush. Hmm. Maybe we are being a little too hard on you. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Nothing is as important to me as my work on the stage. We all use our imaginations when we're kids, right? I used to play with dolls in my own cardboard cutouts by the light of an oil lamp. The shadows would come to life and dance on the walls. I never got tired of it. Fast forward to now, and in many ways, I'm still that same little kid. Lying on his bed, making sound effects. And I get the same joy from running a show now as I did in my little bedroom theater. Of course, a director can accomplish nothing without a cast and crew. So on that note, I want you to all know that I am eternally grateful to each and every one of you. Hey, don't mention it! We had a blast! <laughs> okay, here, take this. Your component, as promised. It's the bottle from the show! The one that lit up when I blew into it! That's right! Can you guess the secret behind why it lights up? an invisible fairy inside that opens its eyes when you blow into it. Uh, bingo! You guessed it. That should do the trick. Oh, wait, this needs tightening up a little. Hold on, this will only take a second. Hmm, this outfit's more fashionable than I imagined. Excuse me, everyone. Do you have a moment? Especially you, Zosimos. Itia wants to do a little something for you. She says it'll be a dream come true. A dream come true? Yes. She said that as useless as she is, she wants to do something for you as the first person to have heard of your dream of being a director. Her words, not mine. I'd have to disagree, though. I have never thought of Itia as a useless person. How is this suddenly about me? If everybody is ready, then I'd like to invite tonight's male lead to take the stage! Ta-da! Wow! Cool! Kaya's turned into the real Dagger Bandit! Um, how is me changing outfits supposed to make the director's day? It's just a prototype costume. Is he that easy to please? Don't be silly. If I know our director, nothing will make him happier than to see his ideas brought to life by the right actor. <laughs> well, then I'm happy to oblige. Who am I to argue with the star of the show? Zosimos drew up countless designs and made a few prototypes before landing on this one. It just needed some tailoring to fit properly, so I made a few stitches here and there. I hope the result isn't a disappointment. Oh, it's perfect. Idea, I... I'm... Oh, <laughs> I'm so touched. Thank you all. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. How are you doing? Recovered? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you again, Idia. Oh, please, don't mention it. Well, now that we have the final component, it's time to say goodbye for now. Let's head to the core of the Valuria Mirage and get this place fixed up. Can I keep wearing my costume? Please do, by all means. 
both of you can keep your costumes. It seems only fair. Yay! Kaya, keep wearing yours too. It looks amazing. <laughs> I agree with our mage. I'm sure it's not every day you get to play such an unforgettable character. Sure. I think I could be a bandit for a little longer. Bye-bye, Mr. Director. Take care, my dear friends. Oh, you and Kale! You got back before us! Yes. Idea had the water droplet send us a message just as the show was coming to an end. So we came back here to wait for you. How is Lysig doing? He finished all the maintenance work, but it took a lot out of him. He's now fast asleep in his room. Oh, I feel a little guilty. <laughs> Consider it his atonement. It's only fair that he had to do something constructive before being able to sleep soundly. Seriously, don't waste your concern on him. If you say so. Okay. Without further ado, let's go and fix the domain! Isn't this where we first met Water Droplet? Correct! The core of the Valyrian Mirage is the largest streaming projector of all, and this domain is one gigantic preprint! Whoa, so everything we've seen is created by this? That's incredible! So, to fix it, same process as usual, right? Do we need to use the preprint? Exactly! Well done! You catch on quick. It's hard to forget after doing it so many times now. Let's get going. <gasps> this is the final step. Yay! Suddenly Paimon's really excited. The hub consists of these components. All you need to do is place them onto the foundation in the right shape. The right shape? standards whatsoever. turning the components are back in the core and the hub is restored to its proper shape again <laughs> that's all we needed to do like any wound it just needs time to heal it'll probably just start turning again one day in the middle of the night when no one's looking really i thought that with your special abilities you could get it turning again right away what us are dying to see it. Not just how the domain looks when it's fixed, but also Idea and her element. I want to see Idea using her magic powers too. I bet they're super awesome. Uh, what are you guys talking about? And how is Cleon on this, but Paimon isn't? They're referring to our mascot's true form. As I've said all along, there's much more to Idea than she gives herself credit for. She has a very special power. Though, I think some of us have sensed that already. Did you notice right away, General? I only found out when I was chatting with Eula. So our General was the first to notice. It seems like she's more perceptive than she lets on. I'd say the same about you, Kaya. What the... All of you? No? I mean, I, I wasn't trying to hide anything from you, I, I promise. It's just... For people who stumble upon this place by accident, I think my current form is more approachable than my true one. I... I don't want people to get scared when they see me. What? What is it? And whatever it is, how the heck does everyone know about it? Uh, well, for one thing, I sensed elemental energy.
energy in the residents here, but none of them have visions. Then my mind started to wander as I was reading a storybook, and suddenly, I had a thought. Since hydro idolins can change into any form, why not human form? You hit the nail on the head. Alright, in that case, please allow me to introduce myself once more. I am an Oceanid who was exiled here when the former Hydro Archon passed away. My name is Adia. Wow, Adia! You're so pretty! <laughs> now that I'm in my true form, I suddenly feel a little embarrassed talking to you all. You look stunning. You should be flaunting this look at every opportunity. Oh, come on. I'm too shy. Wait. So does this mean that all the people we met in here are actually... I'm guessing that the human counterparts to these Hydro Alter Egos are long gone. That's right. When they wanted to leave, I took them to the edge of the desert. The components are, in fact, gifts that they gave to me before they left. But I'm always curious about what brings people here, so I used the streaming projector to bring their wishes to life. A power to grant wishes, but only within the confines of the bottle. Exactly. It's a truly extraordinary light. I've just realized something. When the components fell from the core, it appeared as if they had returned to their respective owners. But actually, it was after the components landed where they did, that their owners and the things associated with them arose around them to form the different zones. So now that the components have been retrieved, does that mean that all those things are gone? Don't worry, they'll be quite safe. As long as I remember them, they'll never disappear. However much we might criticize each other or get into scuffles, in this mirage, they will always be my friends. I had so much fun in the choo-choo cart and hanging out with Mr. Director. I'll never forget them either. Me neither. I'll always remember my adventures in this fantasy land. <laughs> But it's probably time I set this wheel in motion. This one's all yours, Adia. Our magical mascot. Uh, please work! from the Domain's core? Ah, the Shinro Casket. That sounds familiar. One second. Here! Is this it? Wow! A huge shell! It's the relic that Kokomi mentioned earlier! So this is where it's been hiding! It was once a ritual vessel used for making offerings in the Moun Shrine. It's made from the remains of a yokai called the Shinkiro, 
and it can listen to the wishes of those who come to pray to build up Shinki, which gives it its power. Several centuries ago, the relic was lost when the last prefect of Yashiori died in battle. Its final resting place was unknown. The pearl that goes with it should be able to sense the casket's location. But when, unbeknownst to anyone at the time, the casket disappeared inside the core of the Valyria Mirage, the pearl's light died out. Huh? How come? Well, imagine it was a sound instead of light. If the room is too big, you can't hear anything from outside the door, can you? Oh, I get it now. The shell must have been having too much fun one day and got locked in the solitary confinement room. I understand now, too. The core has been wearing out recently. That's why you were able to follow the pearl all the way here. To get back to the story, without the offerings at the shrine, this vessel quickly loses its power. Yet countless people who have visited this domain brought their wishes with them and left a small piece of themselves behind along with their gifts. These have the same effect as the offerings at the shrine. Wow! I never knew this thing was so powerful! It is! Powerful enough to help you repair the Valyria Mirage with any luck. But... what do I do with it? It's simple. We just need to awaken it by telling it what we wish for. For example... My name is Sangonomiya Kokomi, the Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island. And my wish is to use my critical thinking and strategic planning skills to bring a little more joy into the lives of my fellow Watatsumi Islanders, as well as the lives of everyone I cherish. Itia, what do you wish for? Me? I... My wish is that all those who have sojourned to the Valurian Mirage in the past will achieve what they truly wish for, not just in this domain, but out there, too. Even though I know full well that trying to build a railway in the outside world is just a pipe dream, and that Maimuna will probably just go back to being a scholar, and I know that Zosimos has a lot of improving to do as a playwright. It's going to be tough for him back in Fontaine. Chasing your dreams is hard work. Despite all of that, I still hope... that somehow, someday, they will achieve their dreams.
Everyone's praise and curious questions went to my head. I said so many things I'm so ashamed of, and I... I lost the courage to live on. Please don't say that. Yours was a noble wish. Yeah, and you weren't granting wishes for yourself. You did it for other people. I have friends like that too. Other people's hopes and dreams are what motivate them. They'll work tirelessly just to see them smile. If you ask me, that's one of the most noble things a person can aspire to. Please, no more praise. I, I'm really not comfortable with it. It makes me feel so ashamed. Someone like me doesn't deserve so many people's praise. It's like I'm dreaming. Well, at least the domain is fixed now, and all the components are back in place. Mm. What's the matter, Clee? have loads and loads of more wishes. I want to ride the choo-choo car again and look down from up on top of the big wheel. Is there a way to get up on top of the wheel, Idea? There is a way, but there's only space for a very few people. That's okay. I can go up by myself. Um, but it'd be more fun with Mr. Honorary Knight. Are we sure about this? It's so high. What happens if we fall off? Well, yeah, but... Paimon's just worried for you. Don't worry, I'll be there to make sure no one falls off. I haven't been up there in a long time myself. up here. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> Whenever people have to leave this domain, I like to come up here and spend some time alone after I've seen them out. They're always overjoyed when they first arrive and start bringing their imaginations to life. But once they realize that they can't take anything home with them, they get upset. Some of them can't bear to leave. Others regret ever setting foot in this place. Do you ever get sad, Idea? I feel lonely at times, but not sad. A lot of people destroy everything they created before leaving, but some don't, like the residents you met. Before they left, they asked me to make replicas of themselves using Hydro Eidolons. Then they tasked these replicas with maintaining everything they built here, as if this was their way of keeping their dreams alive. That's beautiful. Yeah. I don't know how they're faring in the outside world, but just the thought that one day they might achieve their dreams and live on the outside just as their counterparts do in here, that's enough to make me happy. It feels like I'm here waiting for them in the future, where they've achieved everything they wanted. Uh, really? I just think that every dream, every wish is like a flame in a bottle. Whether someone is still working towards their dream or living it already, 
As long as whenever they think back to that spark of light within them, it still makes them smile fondly. That's all it takes. Well, I feel super happy right now. <laughs> then I guess I finally paid Alice back after all these years. Funny to think I've been in the middle of a desert this whole time. It's just a giant muddy swamp to me. Time for Paimon to give you a nickname! <gasps> mud Fairy! Watch out for Idea the Mud Fairy! How dare you mock me! Roar! I'll gobble you up in one mouthful! <laughs> oh. I'm still embarrassed to have shown you my uglier side. But I'm glad the Valorium Mirage is up and running again. This place is going to be bustling with activity again soon enough. I hope you'll take some time to enjoy yourselves. Yep! I want to get everyone together. For one last ride on the choo-choo cart! <laughs>